Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. In yesterday's existential question, you guys overwhelmingly decided that a gingerbread house is indeed made of gingerbread flesh. So there you go. Well, great job. Today's existential question of the day, which you can vote in the poll right up there, is our eyebrows facial hair? You let us know down below in the comments and in the poll up top. We'll figure that out. You guys are you guys are unanimous in your decisions on some of these things. Speaking of unanimous, it's unanimous that I'm an idiot. Because first up, we have to talk about this giveaway for the NZXT H1 case that we've been hyping up. I didn't know spring break was happening next week. So we're gonna postpone it to March 11th. So uh, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our video on our build in that case. We're giving it away. We're gonna do it on campus. Nobody's gonna be on campus because it's spring break and I'm a dumb dumb. Let's go ahead and move on into the first article of hot news, which proves that GOG or CD Projekt Check Red, they are not dumb dumbs because they are gonna be the saviors of the digital distribution of games world. However that works. They're better than Steam, they're better than Epic because they have announced that they're updating their refund policy to give PC gamers 30 days to return their games. You have up to 30 days. There is no mention of how many hours can be played in those 30 days. There is no mention of any limit on this. It just says that you can get a full refund up to 30 days after purchasing a product, even if you download it, launched, and played it. That's it. This is CD Projekt Red trying to be for the gamer. They're saying that they're taking a gamer's first approach. This is very much in line with also the announcement that they made with Cyberpunk 2077 also being a game that you don't have to purchase on multiple consoles if they're in the same series. So if you get an Xbox One X and get Cyberpunk on that, you also get it on Xbox Series X. So it just seems like GOG, CD Projekt Red, however you want to divide those companies, they are just putting the gamers first. And obviously there is potential for abuse with returning it up to 30 days after you fully completed a game, and I'm sure they're gonna have methods and barriers in place to prevent that, but it does show some honesty with regards to their company trying to make sure that they're taking care of gamers, which is phenomenal. I'm, I'm glad that they're trying to do this. You also have their new launcher, which is the 2.01, which actually consolidates all of your other launchers together. So if you have Epic, Origin, Uplay, Steam, all of that, you can launch it with the GOG launcher. So there is a lot of good to love about GOG, G-O-G. They, the real OGs. But speaking of the negative OG, the reverse, the inverse OG, let's talk about Stadia for a second because they realized that after everybody's three months pass for Pro were up, they're gonna start canceling. And so they updated their app to include a cancellation survey to figure out why you don't wanna use their garbage service that it doesn't live up to the hype of everything that they said even months down the line. I don't know. It might have something to do with that. I didn't go on a full rant in a video talking about why I hate myself for paying for it. Stadia doesn't matter. Moving on to another cloud streaming service, which is Shadow, they have been banished to the shadow realm from Apple because apparently they've violated some of Apple's App Store guidelines. They didn't say which guidelines they violated specifically, but they said due to failure to act in accordance with the specific part of the Apple App Store guidelines, our mobile apps for iPhone and iPad will be removed. They're still working on reinstating that and hopefully it will be back soon. But if you use Shadow, you will no longer be able to use it on iOS at the moment because they they got, they got Yu-Gi-Oh'd by Apple. But don't play this next game in the Shadow Realm because you'll be spooked. Resident Evil 3 is getting a demo. That's the news. Speaking of the consoles, and by speaking of, I'm doing a callback to a previous article. It's it's connected, okay? Segways are good. Anyways, the Xbox Series X people have come out and talked about dynamic latency input to help with reducing latency on the console gaming environment and making sure that gamers are getting better latency. Hopefully they're not just blowing smoke up or bubble butts like Google did with Stadia's negative latency. Hopefully this is actually a real thing and latency does come down on consoles, but we'll have to see. That's the truth when it comes out. Speaking of the truth, a federal court judge just decided that YouTube isn't a public forum. Surprise, YouTube is a private entity and it's considered a private forum. The reason this matters is because a YouTube channel known by PragerU sued YouTube because they got demonetized on some of their content. And PragerU stating that this is because of the political leanings of YouTube and therefore it is a violation of the First Amendment, their freedom of speech, and that it's being taken away from them. However, the court decided that despite YouTube's ubiquity and its role in, as a public facing platform, it remains remains a private forum, not a public forum subject to judicial scrutiny under the First Amendment. PragerU's claim that YouTube censored PragerU's speech faces a formidable threshold hurdle. YouTube is a private entity. The free speech clause of the First Amendment prohibits the government, not a private party, from abridging speech. So that's 
the stance of a federal court judge. Obviously, this could be appealed and taken to a higher level, even potentially up to the Supreme Court. We'll see if that actually happens. However, this stands in line with where I am politically on this topic, at least. I'm just gonna give you my opinion for a second. Whether or not you asked for it, you can leave yours down below. But basically, we got demonetized on yesterday's hot news for mentioning a certain thing that's happening that gets people sick and is all around and people are freaking out about it. We mentioned that in yesterday's hot news and we were demonetized. And while I do not agree with the fact that we should have have been demonetized for that. I do not think that it's okay that we got demonetized and then major news networks such as CBS, ABC, Fox, they can post their stuff on YouTube and still retain monetization. That seems like a double standard to me. I don't appreciate that. However, I will never for one second consider this a violation of my First Amendment right to free speech. They are not hindering my ability as a private citizen to speak my mind. They are hindering me from profiting off of speaking my mind, which is a completely different issue. This is a business thing, not a private thing. I'm a private citizen. However, UFD Tech is part of a corporation. We are a business. So my business is suffering because of what I said. However, that doesn't mean I as a private citizen am suffering. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And things get conflated because typically YouTube channels are individual people's personalities and opinions and viewpoints. However, that doesn't mean because I can't make money off of what I said that they're violating who I am as a person, which is what a right is. That's what the amendments are there to protect. They're the Bill of Rights, inalienable rights that we have as people that cannot be violated. And when they are violated, then it's a huge problem. We have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are the things guaranteed to us, as well as everything added in the Bill of Rights and all of the other amendments. And so those are the things that we can hold on to. Those are the things that we get. Everything else is a privilege, a benefit, or just something we have to deal with in life. And my ability to make money off of my opinion is a privilege privilege that I am very thankful for. I'm glad that I'm able to talk as a talking head and make money from it on YouTube. And if YouTube decides that I cannot do it, then it's my failing as a business owner to not pivot and figure out a way to provide for myself. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Do you think YouTube should be allowed to demonetize channels because they're saying things that YouTube doesn't like? Or do you think it's a violation of free speech and you disagree with the federal court judge? Let me know down below. But speaking of bad guys, YouTube's a bad guy demonetizing everybody. Ryan Johnson came out with with a breakdown of some of the scenes from Knives Out, which is a phenomenal movie, by the way. I wasn't really expecting that a whodunit would be that good. And then when I saw that Ryan Johnson directed it, I was like, a gasp, a gasp. I gasped at how his name appeared on the screen. Anyways, I really loved it. He broke down a scene and talked about one of the industry secrets is that Apple refuses to let bad guys use their phones in the movies. So if you're watching a whodunit and you see somebody using an iPhone, you can automatically exclude them, or you can assume that it's an indie film that doesn't follow Hollywood's rules and they're gonna bamboozle you. Or now that Ryan Johnson's come out and said that, Apple's gonna tweak the rules so that for no good reason, I don't know, they have no reason to <laughs> tweak the rules. Speaking of tweaking, a satellite tweaked itself into another satellite in the first ever commercial docking of satellites in space. This opens up a lot of potential for resurfacing and fueling and working on different satellites between commercial entities. Obviously, satellites docking together is not necessarily novel. Obviously, there's things like the International Space Station receiving dockings all of the time for its supplies, but this was the first time that a commercial spacecraft has been able to dock with another commercial spacecraft. Space is getting commercial, y'all. Can't wait for a giant pep Pepsi advert above me while I'm trying to sleep at night because I sleep under the stars. Speaking of having no roof over your head, Reddit CEO seems to think that TikTok doesn't have a roof of integrity and calling it fundamentally parasitic, saying that he does not appreciate what TikTok is as a platform. And this is coming from Reddit CEO and co-founder Steve Huffman. And he said, maybe I'm going to regret this, but I can't even get to that level of thinking with them. And that's in regard to whether or not there are some innovations going on with TikTok. And he said, because I look at that app as so fundamentally parasitic that it's always listening. The fingerprinting technology they use is truly terrifying and I could not bring it to install an app like that on my phone. I actively tell people don't install that spyware on your phone. TikTok themselves coming out saying these are baseless accusations made without a shred of evidence. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. All I know is TikTok is where it's not at for me because I'm a boomer at this point. Let me know your thoughts on TikTok. Do you think it's just a place for children? Where well, it's really not. That's obvious at this point. A lot of people are adopting it, but then do you think it's spyware made by the Chinese government to spy on us random Americans doing weird things? Speaking of weird things, Reese, how much would you guess the game Roblox is worth? Roblox, however you say it. I don't know. Four billion dollars! That's more than I was gonna say. Four billion dollars. They recently just raised $150 million in a round of funding with a valuation of four billion dollars. That's up from the $2.5 billion valuation they had just a year ago. Roblox, 
stonks. But if you're a man or a woman who has some specialty in developing semiconductor nodes, well then you can get hired by TSMC because they're looking to hire 4,000 new staff helping to bring online their new semiconductor nodes such as three nanometers and beyond. If you want to be part of the next generation of people that can continue our tech addiction, maybe consider applying. Speaking of developing stuff, the Senate, US Senate, has decided that they're allocating a billion dollars to help replace Huawei gear in rural areas in the United States. Obviously because the United States has a stance against Huawei and ZTE being part of the Chinese government and translating data back to them, they're working to make sure that they get rid of all of their hardware and everything else and also stifling the innovation of Huawei and 5G modems and all that kind of stuff in other countries. Speaking of stifling, Walmart wants to stifle the growth of Amazon with its new service called Walmart Plus, which is going to be Basically, it's delivery unlimited service, which you pay $98 a year and you get unlimited same day grocery deliveries from certain stores and like other good delivery services. It's basically Amazon Prime from Walmart and then it has grocery benefits, which is kind of good, but at the same time, bah. But what we're waiting on is drone delivery from Amazon and other retail stores. And it looks like a new hybrid multi-rotor drone has broken the world record of endurance for a drone. Reese, how long do you think it stayed up in the air? At least an hour. Eight hours and 10 minutes. It stayed stationary for that eight hours, but it weighs 25 kilos. Sure, it's a lot of battery in there, but it stayed afloat, just like Apple's trying to keep the iPad afloat, being this weird mixture of not a computer, but not an actual tablet, but not a phone. Anyways, apparently there's a new iPad Pro smart keyboard coming out later this year that's going to have a built-in trackpad, further confusing everybody as to what the heck an iPad is. Is it a computer? Is it not? Is it doing away with computers like Apple said? Or is it just an iPad? Let me know down below. Don't forget to let me know our eyebrows, facial hair. Vote in that poll right up there. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. This was a weird one. I'm sorry, folks. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. What am I, Reese? I'm an idiot. Roll it back. <laughs>